Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about batteries um, and how they uh, are used in the battery charger. What effects they have, how they can be dangerous, and also um, how to properly handle charging the battery without putting any stress on your um, pod systems. So we're going to go over those factors once we get in. By the way, if you like this content, do please like and subscribe as it does help grow my channel. All right, now we're in. Um, so first off, we're going to need the atomic pile. The first thing you need to understand is what happens when you use the, um, the battery charger. Now, a battery charger uh, is here. All the components that you'll need are inside here. You're welcome to uh, populate these components. They're very simple. It's a button, power connector, a transformer, and a fuse, which is underneath. Uh, you don't necessarily need all these items, but this is a safe circuit. Um, so yeah, when you put a battery inside of here, it's going to charge. Even if the battery is full, it's going to charge. This is a very old piece of equipment. It does not have a safety mechanism inside to know that the battery is full. Um, leaving it in will also damage the battery. In addition, the atomic pile power demand, if you look, the blue is normally there, but when we put this in the charger, our demand skyrockets into very unsafe. We are way past safe levels. Uh, if you look here, uh, our, our uh, blue line is almost in the red. Uh, this is really bad because y you may think that if it's in the red here, this is where it's dangerous. That is not true. It actually gets dangerous well before that. What's happening is is the radiation shielding while you're charging this battery and forgetting about it is heating up. It's getting very hot. Uh, it's going to get to a point where I'm going to be exposed to radiation and I'm going to die because once you start seeing those stars that start popping on the screen, you've been exposed to radiation and there's a good chance that that's the end of your run because within uh, a certain amount of time, I want to say around five minutes, uh, you die of radiation. So yeah, the radiation shielding is great, but it also is a limit. It can't protect you from high temps uh, and those high temps are before you reach that red. See, you see here, it says red. It's not going to reach. I'm going to die. I'm going to get radiation poisoning well before that happens. So the other thing, leaving it in also damages the battery. As you can see, the battery's already got two blips. Um, I'm starting to see these stars, but I don't know if that's going to show up for you, but it means I've been affected. Uh, and in addition, my system has been, um, you know, flooded. Why else is it bad? Well, let's say you just got hit by a meteor shower. Your fuse is dead. Your transformer is dead. They're broken inside the system. Actually, let's try to represent that. And we're going to break this. I can't put the fuse in because that'll pop it. Uh, it's off. All right, we got a bad transformer, right? What happens when I take this out, huh? Your, your whole system is going to get surged. And usually this would blow up. Why? I don't know. All right, so maybe the transformer has to be out? Yeah, okay. Well, for some reason, broken transformers are working. I don't know why that's happening, but that's definitely not supposed to. Um, so yeah, well, what would happen is if the devices aren't working, it's supposed to do this. It's supposed to break your cable. Um, it's supposed to damage various systems. The pump might be bad. Uh, various things will break. So it's actually just not good because the power is way higher than our demand, and that creates a surge. So. If you have broken stuff in your system, it could happen if everything's operating properly and the transformer actually isn't working and the fuse isn't working, then yes, the system will break. All right. Anyway, so uh, you have radiation. We know that's one. That's what happens if you leave it in and it stays on. Two, it damages the battery. That's always bad. Uh, pulling the battery out while the pile is hotter than your demand, meaning the red line is above the blue line, can cause a surge in a damaged system that could break and destroy multiple components inside of one of your drawers or over here or in here, anywhere where the, there's uh, fuses and transformers required, um, e even your lights, who knows where. Um, yeah, so that would create a surge and you would ha possibly have an even more dire situation just because you wanted to charge a battery. So then the next question we ask, how do we properly charge batteries? All right, well, let's let's do start over and, and pretend we're going to do this the right way. So the right way to charge it, at least this is my personal preference and how I like to handle batteries and uh, not have to worry about surging my system, not, not having to worry about the heater getting hot. It allows me to charge multitude of batteries. It only takes a little extra time. There are two different methods. There's the safe method, and there's a little bit of a risky method. Um, the risky method, I haven't had anything happen to me, but 
you know, someone might, especially when you're running all systems on like this with 92C, you might eventually get exposed to radiation um, on my secondary method. So let's go ahead and talk about that. First, when you charge a battery, you're, you're going to see that this pings and your system's going to get hot. It's going to be a few moments, depending on how much power you have in the system for this battery to charge up. So this is going to go up quite a bit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let this uh, go up faster. Um, so yeah, it's going to go up to, let's say, about there. All right. So what you do is instead of pulling the battery out of here, because this is the first instinct, it's just to pull your charged battery out of here, you turn off the reactor and then pull the battery out. This will prevent any surge to any of the parts in the system because the, the reactor is off, so it doesn't supply power to any devices and they're running on battery right now. That's the only reason they're on. Um, but yeah, they are not getting any power at this. They're not seeing that surge from me pulling the battery out because it's really hot. Um, so that's the first step. And then the next thing is, to, now that you've pulled your battery out, you can actually see the blue line, is to wait for the red line to go under. If you want the red line to go down faster, you can always pull off the back side of this radiation shielding, and that red line will actually go down about twice as fast. So that is an option. You don't have to do that. Like I said, you could just let it cool. It depends on how much of a rush you're in, uh, whether you're willing to take that risk of getting possible radiation. Uh, in. And as soon as the blue line is uh, underneath, this is a little too much, but as soon as the blue line's around or underneath the, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the red line is underneath the blue line, you can turn on the reactor and it'll heat back up again. And then you can go right back to your next battery, charge that up, let it go for a while, um, you know, and it will do its charge, it'll warm up again, and you just repeat this cycle. You know, I would uh, go ahead and turn this off, pull my battery out, and then as soon as it's already there, and then I would just turn this back on and we're ready to go. And you can just fire off batteries after batteries. And that's the safest way to go. Uh, no shocks to the system. Um, you know, there's really no risk if you don't take the shielding off. It's simply just waiting for the reactor to cool. And it's going to be dependent on how long it takes for those batteries to charge that um, your system gets hot. I think the only thing I haven't really covered is an ice nebula. Um, you don't have to worry. The, the, the problem with an ice nebula is it reduces reactor output. And uh, I do have another video that talks about that. And the reactor output will never go up. So that's the one exception to this rule is when you're charging a battery in an ice nebula. Actually, we could just do that now. The one exception to an ice nebula is that your reactor power won't go up. The problem with charging a batteries in a, in a ice nebula is that you will be taking all of the power for the battery charger and none of your other systems will be able to get that um, which is bad in and of itself because then everything's running off batteries you are trying to charge batteries while everything's running off batteries as you can see it's there um, i can throw this in the charger like so and, and all of my systems are now running off battery they're not getting anything all the juice is going toward oh my goodness okay well yeah, it's still going there. Um, the reason that went on fire is because obviously you can't charge a full battery for too long before you destroy it. So anyway, we destroyed that battery. That's fine. But uh, yeah, the charger's still on. And as you can see, even though I'm pinging all the way, the ice nebula will actually lock my output down below. So this is the one time where if you did want to just charge batteries, it will take a long time. You can. You have that option. Uh, you won't over... The reactor won't heat up or anything because this event locks it. Probably the only event that you could actually do that and just pop batteries in and out because you're never going to uh, cause that that um, demand line. The, not sorry, you're not going to cause the power line to go over the demand line. It's always going to be, uh, you know, low. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something. Um, have fun with the charging batteries. Remember battery safety. And if whether you see me or you don't, I hope you all have a good one.